There is something inherently unnerving about the sight of someone wearing a gas mask. Maybe it's the wide, soulless portholes where a person's eyes should be, or the huge round filter extruding from their face that makes them look like something inhuman. It could also be the fact that if ever you see someone wearing a gas mask, you may be surrounded by poisonous gas. And if you're not wearing one yourself, someone else's gas mask may be the last thing you ever see. Whatever the reason, you might be wondering why we're talking so much about gas masks. Well, that's because you're about to meet SCP-1499, which is, as you might have already guessed, an anomalous gas mask. For all you military history buffs out there, SCP-1499 is specifically a Soviet GP-5 gas mask. These were produced between 1962 and 1990 as a way to protect the wearer from the fallout of a nuclear blast. Back then, during the Cold War, an atomic conflict between the United States and the USSR, that's Russia, was a constant threat. And so these masks were sent to most of the fallout shelters in the Soviet Union. While the GP-5 masks could survive in all weather and protect against radioactive substances for a time, some of their filters contained a number of harmful chemicals like lead and asbestos. The fact that these gas masks were airtight would mean that somebody could end up inhaling these toxic chemicals while trying to protect themselves from nuclear fallout. If you look up the definition of irony in the dictionary, you may see a picture of one of these gas masks sitting right next to it. And if you think that sounds bad, just wait until you hear what sets SCP-1499 apart from the rest. Upon first inspection, the mask still seems to perform its original function. The filter works properly, and the airtight seal is still formed when placed upon somebody's head. However, when worn by someone, the anomalous effects of SCP-1499 will also activate. While it doesn't fuse to the wearer's face and turns them into a hysterical zombie chillingly asking for their mommy, the gas mask does cause anyone who puts it on to completely disappear from view. Now, it's worth noting that this isn't a gas mask that grants its user the power of invisibility. If that was the case, this anomalous item may actually be desirable. SCP-1499 instead causes a person to physically vanish as in they are no longer detectable at all. Subjects that have worn SCP-1499 report that they don't feel any sensation of moving. They simply put the mask on and end up... Well, we'll get to where it is they go. You see, through testing, the SCP Foundation's researchers were able to determine that giving someone a two-way radio before they put SCP-1499 on means that they can still be contacted after they vanish. And it's through these radios that the Foundation discovered where the mask wearers go. During testing, subjects have reportedly found themselves in a strange alternate dimension after putting on SCP-1499. It has been described as a dark environment, inhospitable, barren, and filled with tall, black tower-like structures. You would think being unceremoniously transported to another dimension by a gas mask would be bad enough. Just wait until you meet the locals. According to a number of test subjects, a group of humanoid entities inhabit this dimension, designated as SCP-1499-1. These creatures are taller than the average person, completely nude and covered from head to toe in a coat of a dark, viscous substance unlike anything found in our dimension. These SCP-1499-1 entities also have been described as having too many mouths and a large number of eyes covering their bodies. From the sound of it, the whole place makes the upside down from Stranger Things sound like a pleasant destination for a family vacation. For the record, the reason we say according to a number of test subjects is that there has never been any photographic or video evidence of this place and the creatures that inhabit it. All that we have gathered to date has come strictly from first-hand descriptions of those experiencing the anomalous effects of SCP-1499. Luckily, anyone that puts on SCP-1499 and finds themselves in this place has a very quick and easy escape route. Should a subject encounter any danger in this dark, inhospitable dimension, then taking the gas mask off will drop them right back into our own plane of existence. Upon arriving back, they will not have moved from the spot they were standing in when they first disappeared. But it is unknown exactly how the gas mask is able to return them, 
or indeed how it can send someone to an entirely different dimension at all. So, a gateway to another dimension. That's what the mask is. The Foundation has been running tests on SCP-1499 since they first acquired it, at first using D-Class personnel. The first test involving SCP-1499 saw a D-Class, D-67393, told to put on the mask. When she did, she found herself transported inside a building that was constructed from an unknown black substance. D-67393 surveyed the room she was in for a few seconds, only to hear something moving close by. The sound caused her to panic, and she retched the gas mask off her face, returning to the test chamber. Given that there was now a risk of losing SCP-1499, the Foundation moved forward with tests involving trained agents instead of D-Class personnel. Following this, the next test involved an Agent C putting on the mask, and like the D-Class before him, he found himself in the same dark room. But instead of taking off SCP-1499 at the first sign of trouble, this agent explored his surroundings. Agent C was able to descend the building to a reasonable degree until he heard sounds coming from the floor below. After hiding himself, Agent C witnessed the very first sighting of the SCP-1499-1 creatures, remaining undetected and then safely removing the mask when the creatures had passed. Another agent, known as Agent Yu, was selected for an SCP-1499 test, chosen especially for her extensive training in stealth. Like those before her, she put on the gas mask. Instantly, she found herself in the place where her predecessor had left off, and continued the exploration of the building. Detecting movement from the floors above, Agent Yu exited the building and spotted a number of SCP-1499-1 instances. The creatures were mulling aimlessly around, each sporting their own unique mutations, occasionally uttering low, grating noises. By now, if they were still using D-Classes, they probably would have lost the mask and the people wearing it a hundred times over. Never get a D-Class to do a field agent's job. Making her way past more of the tall, dark structures, the agent followed and observed a group of four creatures. A fifth approached them, prompting one from the group to step forward. As Agent Yu watched, these SCP-1499-1 creatures began violently assaulting each other, until she too pulled the gas mask off and returned to the Foundation. Shortly afterward, one final agent, Agent K, was sent into this alternate dimension. This was less of a test, more a mission, with the purposes of reconnaissance, to give the Foundation a better, clearer idea of what the environment was like and to possibly even make contact with the SCP-1499-1s and understand them better. However, the outcome that followed could not have been worse. Agent K appeared in the other dimension between two of the black structures. The lighting made it difficult to see much of the environment around him, but he remarked that the buildings resembled tall spires constructed out of hard rock, as was the ground beneath him. After a few short minutes, he soon spotted a group of SCP-1499-1s entering a larger structure, an elaborate building with a number of towers and spikes on it, as well as what appeared to be blood. Approaching the building with caution, Agent K located a small, secluded side entrance, away from the larger front door. As quietly as he could, he made his way inside. The sounds of grinding filled the air from all around him, as Agent K saw a huge group of the mutated humanoid creatures. Each one had their mouth wide open, all of their mouths wide open, making a chorus of grating sounds. The entities were, according to K's description, all facing towards one of the SCP-1499-1s that was standing on a platform in front of them, with a number of bodies around it. This creature seemed to be leading an odd ritual, and began to cut open its own torso. Worm-like creatures spilled out of the open womb, and a beam of light followed, projecting out of the entity's chest. Agent K realized that this light was some form of portal. Another worm, like the kind that had come out of the ritual leader's chest, began to appear in the portal. Deciding to act, Agent K dashed out from his hiding place, opening fire at the creatures all around him. He reached for something glowing in the lead entity's chest, which he thought was bringing the worm creature through the portal. Grabbing it, Agent K pulled off the gas mask and found himself back at the Foundation, holding a human heart. But it doesn't end there. At the exact same time, on the exact same date, 
a man attacked the Cathedral of Christ the Savior in Moscow, Russia. During the church's morning services, the gunman entered dressed in a suit with a gas mask over his face and proceeded to shoot 10 civilians. Six were killed, three left in critical condition including the church's chanter. However, the worst occurred to the priest performing the service. The attacker ran to the front of the cathedral, producing a knife which he used to cut open the priest's chest and remove his heart. Then, just as quickly as he had appeared, the assailant vanished before the eyes of multiple witnesses, and Moscow police were unable to find any trace of the man. Officially, the cathedral was attacked by Nikolai Orlov. Undercover Foundation operatives inside Russia's media and military have spread this cover story of a violent man who acted alone in his attack on the church. Meanwhile, the SCP Foundation is keeping Agent K detained, questioning him about his involvement in the incident. According to him, everything happened exactly as he described it. No church, no priest, just him wearing SCP-1499 and surrounded by the creatures. The audio recordings taken from his exploration mission also seem to align with this story, but that still doesn't explain how another figure in a gas mask appeared in Moscow and claimed the lives of multiple churchgoers. Not only that, but dispatching them in the exact same way Agent K dealt with the SCP-1499-1 creatures. The only possible explanation was that Agent K was the perpetrator, even if, in his mind, he was still telling the truth. Hoping to avoid another incident, the O5 Council has suspended all further testing with SCP-1499. Agent K has been scheduled to undergo a psychological evaluation, believing the creature he saw being summoned had to be stopped at all costs. The other agents and the D-Class involved in earlier testing are all being brought in for questioning as well. It is still unknown what the anomalous effect of SCP-1499 truly is. Is it actually capable of transporting someone to another dimension? Or does it give a person hallucinations that make them think they're gallivanting off in Dimension X, while they're actually walking up to a church about to do something unthinkable? With testing suspended, we may never know. But it leaves us with an important message. Think carefully about everything you do, because what you think you can see doesn't always reflect what's really there. Now go check out Robot Battle Royale SCP-1370 Pesterbot and SCP-261 Pan-Dimensional Vending Machine for more fascinating anomalous objects from the SCP Foundation.